The world's first offshore wind farm was installed in 1991 off the coast of Indeby on the Danish island of Lolland. It included 11 turbines with a capacity of 450 kilowatts each, and the project cost 10 million euros. At the time, offshore turbines were considered ludicrous by the electric power industry as they had to operate in salty conditions and have much less power than central power plants. The skepticism changed six years later as offshore wind powers produced more energy than land winds. The wind farm produced a total of 243 gigawatt hours over 25 years of operation and was decommissioned in 2017 for economic reasons. What has changed since then? Why are we still not making the most of offshore wind? And how can innovative vertical axis wind turbines make a difference? What are the benefits of offshore wind energy? The wind in the sea is stronger and more constant. It gives more energy on a stable basis. Wherein the wind speed increases the amount of energy non-linearly. You will get it twice as much if the wind starts blowing at a speed of not 20, but 25 kilometers per hour. An offshore windmill may operate for up to 50 to 60 percent of the time, compared to only 35 percent along the coast and even less on the continent. But the disadvantages are also significant. Offshore wind turbines are huge, they are larger than land-based versions. Although this allows more energy to be produced, further growth is not possible. Wind turbines have approached their physical limits, no economies of scale are foreseen. On the contrary, the production of components, installation and maintenance of such structures are very expensive. The main working structure of the wind turbine is located high above sea level. Such a center of gravity requires a huge stable foundation for a 6 megawatt plant up to 5,000 tons of concrete and 700 tons of steel are needed. Moreover, servicing them at such a height is also very difficult and expensive. Difficult working conditions at sea lead to the fact that every year the efficiency of installations decreases by an average of 4.5%. After 10 years, they produce half as much energy. Moreover, the probability of failures and breakdown is also growing. After 8 years, it is 80%. But let's get to the numbers. Based on the U.S. Energy Information Administration EIA, until 2025, the average cost per megawatt of offshore wind turbines will be $122. By 2040, it will probably drop to $85. By comparison, gasoline-powered electric generators produce a megawatt for as little as $38. Therefore, if the cost of offshore wind energy does not drop to at least $50, such installations will not become competitive and it is not possible to reduce the price with current technologies and designs. Now, all projects are being implemented with government subsidies for the sake of decarbonization, but in the long run, making a successful business out of them will not work. Perhaps the problem is that current offshore windmills are built on land-based construction principles that are poorly applicable at sea, aren't they? How to get around the existing restrictions and effectively use the potential of offshore wind energy? The Sea Twirl startup seems to have the answer to this question. The Norwegian company was established in 2012 when the founders decided to commercialize on an industrial scale an idea that was first tested on working models back in 2007. As a result, in 2015, a 30 kilowatt prototype of a new wind turbine of an innovative design called S1 was launched at sea near the Swedish city of Lysekil. It still continues to float in the sea and over these seven years has shown the ability to withstand hurricane winds and storm waves, and also proved to be fault tolerant as well as effective. The fundamental difference between Sea Twirl's development is that it is a vertical axis wind turbine, not a horizontal one. The surface part of the S1 structure is 13 meters. Three vertically arranged blades are fixedly attached by spacers to the central rod. The stability of the structure is ensured by a long and heavy underwater part 18 meters high which acts as a keel. The generator ring is located around the central rod and fixed by anchors on the sea surface. When the blades catch the wind, they set in motion the central rod that turns around its axis. At this time, the generator collects the generated energy and sends it to the shore through cables. What are the benefits of such a design? It's easier and not as expensive. 
For instance, generator bearings do not need to support the weight of the entire structure. Therefore, they can be lighter, smaller, and cheaper. Such windmills do not require the construction of an expensive and complex foundation. Since the generating substation is located on the surface of the sea, cranes or helicopters are not needed for maintenance and repair, as is the case with horizontal windmills. The cost of uninterrupted operation of the facility is estimated at 25 to 30 years. They can also be placed at great depths, and they are able to catch the wind from various directions. These two factors make it possible to fully exploit the potential of offshore wind energy, maximizing the load on the generator. Huge classic windmills need to be placed far from each other. The Sea Twirl project creates a much smaller wake of air, allowing more energy to be collected from the same area. The Sea Twirl is now preparing to launch a 1 megawatt S2 plant off the coast of Norway in 2023. It should work for about five years and finally prove the viability of the idea. To generate this amount of electricity, the structure will be much larger than the S1 prototype. The surface part will be about 50 meters and the underwater part will be 85 meters. But most importantly, it will be competitive. The presentation to investors indicated that independent experts estimate that the S2 unit will be able to generate electricity at a price below $50. With classic wind turbines struggling to reach twice as much, this is an excellent prognosis for the Sea Twirl. The Sea Twirl project has every chance to make itself known and radically change the entire offshore wind industry. But for this, they need to launch at least a megawatt facility deep in the sea. And this is the main challenge. The larger the size and the farther from the coast, the more difficult the task becomes at times. Each mistake is much more expensive and the difficulties can become insurmountable. The company admits that they do not yet know how to deliver and launch a structure of 135 meters into the sea. Still, we believe that such an installation will be able to prove its effectiveness and turn the offshore wind industry in the right direction.